Do you ever find you struggle painting reflections in water? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you some top tips that makes painting water reflections so much easier. Coming up. Hi again there guys, Emma here from Paint and Pino giving you some top tips for all things art and design and today we're going to look particularly at how to paint really effective water reflections. We're going to focus on two techniques, one is where you refract the water when you're actually reflecting an object such as a building, the other one's going to be how we actually paint an ocean scene where we're reflecting the sky above. Alrighty, let's have a look at how we do this, here we go. So this first tip is based on the idea of having a reflection from, let's imagine these were buildings. So the idea here is if your water is not, there's not too much movement, you're just gonna shake the brush down with a slight ripple effect. Whereas here in the middle, if there's a little bit more water movement, then obviously you're going to get a little bit more of a distorted reflection. So you're just gonna move the brush around a little bit more dramatically. And then the third one, which is the one I most commonly like to use with reflections, is just to give a suggestion. So this is great if there's much more movement in the water and you're just really trying to suggest that that reflection is coming through. You can also work light into what we've done already. So what you might want to do is add some white streaks. So you actually almost produce like a, a straight reflection. So I'll use the example on this side here. And then you're just gonna give some very thick but very dynamic sort of white streaks to break that line up. So you're getting more of the same effect that we had in the first line. And yeah, I'm just gonna show you here an example of a cityscape painting that I've done recently of the city of Perth. So when it comes to that line that I was talking about, you can see there, all right, I've gone with the yellow paint, but that's just to break up those reflective images. Now this technique is much, um, more appropriate for where you're doing an actual ocean painting. So I've already done the background here. This is taken from a video which I will be uploading um, and I'll leave a link below as soon as it's been uploaded. So this is showing you how to paint an ocean scene. So all I've done is gone from a very sort of a warm blue with a hint of yellow down so you can see where it's gradually getting yellow towards the bottom and then the technique here is all about light just as the first one was refracting the, sh the reflection this is now actually really exaggerating that reflection so using almost like a honeycomb shape just with a fine detail brush here very thick with the white i want to be quite sporadic with the mark making so that you don't want to be too um, repetitious because it's going to look like a pattern so if you just bear in mind have that honeycomb feel about it sort of diamond shapes but really really erratic with your brush movement so making sure that you know each line is a little bit more scattered because obviously reflections there's nothing organized about them they are just literally reflecting off the light off the top of the surface of the ocean so what we will do in a moment on top of this, once you've got, this is just like the base layer of the ocean where you're putting this refracted, reflected light coming off with the white. We're then gonna work some wave elements through this. Just gonna work a few more of those honeycomb like lines through. Now here's the example of what I was talking about with the with the waves. So you can see I've just put a highlight through. It's a very subtle U shape. And now I'm just working the low light underneath it. So where you've got the top of each wave, you're gonna have a lighter, almost dry brush effect. And now I'm using a dry brush effect with a darker blue. And this is the color of the sky. So this time I'm using the cool blue to have a, a significant contrast against the background but you're going to give that lovely dark edge to the wave so it really feels like you're painting in the front of the wave but you've got to do this technique with a dry brush or else the whole effect just doesn't work so you can really work it into the background the great thing is with dry brush is it takes away that pressure of making a mistake because you're putting limited amounts of pigment onto your canvas you can't really make a mistake at this stage and if you do you can obviously always fix it up pretty quickly because you've not got a lot of paint on there so you get a sense now there's three sets of waves and um, this is the top wave and then obviously as they work down you just really want to try and blend that cooler blue very subtly into the background colors you can still see that reflected light with the white lines that i made earlier but now you've got those waves coming through across 
So remember, reflections, guys, is all about light. You are literally showing the light that's reflecting, and that's how you're gonna get the effect of making a water reflection. there you have it guys hope you've enjoyed today's video on how to produce really effective water reflections if you have enjoyed the video then do hit that like button just below as it really does help our channel and if you'd like to see some more weekly top tips just like this one then hit that subscription button and the notification bell because we do do weekly videos every wednesday and saturday so if you hit that bell you know when we're coming on next all right guys we'll see you next time happy painting